Hey y'all, welcome to the Anxiety Warriors podcast. We are your hosts, Margo and Abby. We are friends, teachers, and storytellers, but above all, we're anxiety warriors on a mission to raise awareness and understanding about anxiety and mental health. You will hear honest, engaging, and joyful stories from us and many other anxiety warriors about living with anxiety. If you're seeking a space to laugh, connect, feel inspired and empowered, and learn valuable tips rooted in mindfulness and more, your warrior community is here for you. Join us as we navigate this journey of life together. Welcome, warriors. Yay! We are stoked that you are back with us again this week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stoked. So, sound like you said soaked. Even though we I know are you just soaked. repeated stoked. <laughs> we are soaked. <laughs> oh, that sounds, that mean, sounds not was good. Was that so we're soaking wet with sweat, right? I got a little drippage happening right now. All I don't right. have short sleeves on, though. I've got a tank top on, but it is over 90 degrees here yeah. for September. It's pretty yeah. freaking pretty freaking humid and gross today. It's definitely feeling like summer today. with the soak. (laughs) Stoked to be soaked. (laughs) Don't you love the witty banter that we come up with? This is very witty. (laughs) This is super witty. I mean, this might be like top wit right here for me. (laughs) Oh my God. This is why we're dork nerd fam. Okay. We're dork nerd geek. Dork nerd geek combo. Mm. Um, Okay. Warriors, we are going to be having a very serious conversation yeah, today. I know not... I'm saying it kind of funny, but yeah, it's kind of serious. Yeah, it's we serious. try to make everything lighthearted, as, as lighthearted as we can. Yeah. We're gonna be um talking about handling, knowing, communicating with challenging people. Yes, I would even call them difficult, but we can say challenging. What's different for you between challenging and difficult? Uh, challenging for me means that there's still a way to interact and compromise and, and mm. have logical, rational conversations. Difficult is um, they need help that I can't provide like they need serious therapy right like they are difficult (laughs) and they need therapy and uh there's no wiggle room for any logical conversation that's my difference yeah i feel challenging and difficult the same or no i well i would have said that they're in the same camp i think they're under the same umbrella for sure Mm -hmm. but i don't disagree with you i think that there are there are there is a difference i think when i hear the word challenge I don't necessarily think of it as something that can't be tackled. I think of it as something that, that, like you said, has wiggle room, has space to breathe. Where like, Mm -hmm. not that it would be fun necessarily, but maybe there's a sense of accomplishment, right? For getting through, getting through something. Whereas if it's difficult, my, my, my mind, I guess, goes quicker to like, it's hard. I don't want to do it. It's like, almost, I I don't know. I don't know why I have that difference either. Mm -hmm. It's just, that is how I feel that there is, there is that light difference for me too. I mean, to be completely transparent and I really hope I don't offend anyone. Um, but just, you know, this is my perspective. This is based on my life experience. Um, difficult people tend to, in my life, have personality disorders, like Mm. for real, that they are not getting therapy for. And um, they are just too difficult to deal with to the point where throughout my life, I used to try to navigate that difficultness. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And at this point in my life, um, I'm just like, you know, spoiler alert. I just, I just, that's it. It's a boundary set and I block you and I never speak to you again. Mm, Interesting. Yep. So, all right. Say more, say more. Okay, so um, I haven't had a panic attack in a very, very long time. Um, But this one particular difficult person (laughs) um, led me to have a panic attack um, within the last, I can't even remember now, because you and I have been talking about doing this episode for months. Months, yeah. Um, And so I can't even remember, but I think it was like last winter, springtime. And the, the short of it is, is that, Dan has a family member who definitely has narcissistic personality disorder, like, like classic. Right. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and he is extremely difficult and he is a little bit emotionally abusive and, um, you know, difficult. And, uh, he used to just write nasty emails to me a lot. And I barely know this guy at all. And they weren't nasty about me. They were nasty about Dan or about Dan's family or, you know, whatever it might be. Mm. And I just kind of ignored them. Um, And then uh, Dan had another family member who I'm pretty sure has histrionic personality disorder. Um, Pretty classic there. And um, she just wanted to meddle and like get involved in the situation that had nothing to do with her. We kind of had it under wraps, right? Having to do with the first member of Dan's yes. family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But she, you know, likes drama. I don't know. Like we literally told her, please don't get involved in this. Please don't get involved in this. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we had set up some some pretty good boundaries with the other person. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, to be fair, it did get to the point with the other person sending the emails where I was like, if you email me again, I'm getting the cops involved for a restraining order. And so I haven't heard back from that person ever again, which is great. Like don't need that person in my life. I barely know the person, right? It's not my family, my family. I can navigate a little bit more. Right. Sure. Um, so then the second person, (laughs) I don't know why, but really felt like she needed to fix the situation that didn't need any fixing and definitely not by her. Right. Right. So she started meddling and we said, please, please do not get involved in this situation. Like everything is fine the way it is. Um, And she basically meddled so much and did the exact things we asked her not to do um, where she ended up getting the first family member involved again. And I just panicked because I had done everything you're supposed to do in communicating and saying, please don't get involved in this. And like, like I barely know this person too, right? Like I barely know both these people, right? Um, They're both very ill. They are ill human beings that, that definitely need help and therapy. And instead Mm -hmm. of doing that, they're just wreaking their chaos on people around them. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was always, always super nice to the second person involved, but I was also very clear, please don't get involved. The first person is unpredictable. I don't know like how this person is. I don't want them to mistake anything, take anything the wrong way. I don't want to be involved with this person. And the second person also at times had interacted with the first person and was a little bit nervous for her own safety. So she knew that, he is an unstable person. Right. Mm -hmm. And after it's seeming like she wasn't going to get involved, she then called the first person trying to get involved, trying to make amends. You know, I had to instantly on her behalf. No, for us. Yeah. For us. And telling the first person to call us. Mm which we didn't ask any of that. We didn't ask any of that. And I instantly just panicked, like full on panic attack, just laying on the floor of this room. Like, oh my God, I don't want to deal with, like, I don't want to deal with this chaos. I had put all these boundaries up. I had said, don't get involved. I was very kind, right? I was very kind to everyone, right? But I had set these boundaries and this person just wants drama in her life. Like, that's the only explanation I have. And, like, I, I have heard about her childhood. Her childhood was extremely chaotic. Her childhood was extremely dramatic and, and unpredictable. And so it makes sense that this is what she feels comfort in. She feels comfortable in chaos, right? Mm-hmm. So then after this person did the meddling, I wrote her and I was like, I had asked you not to do this. Now I am afraid of, for my safety, like, please understand the repercussions of your actions. So then she gets someone else involved. I know, like, I'm intentionally not saying names. Of course. And that person like, like screamed at me and Dan and was like, never contact us again. Even though they did everything right. Mm -hmm. Like he, the other person, he just ignores 
the second person's behaviors, right? And then ever since then, the second person every once in a while is still trying to get in touch with us, even though, Mm. you know, she escalated things, she blew things out of her portion, then she got other people involved to tell us to never contact them. It's like, we didn't contact you in the first place. Like, yeah, just so much dysfunction. I literally snapshotted all of the Facebook messages from the second person. Um, I should have given fake names at the beginning, but whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> and in it, she constantly in our Facebook messaging is trying to meddle. And I keep saying to her, please don't do that. I don't see a path forward with this other person. They're ill. And she was like, I totally agree. They are ill. I totally agree. They are unstable. Yes, I totally agree. They need help. Right. And then yet she still wanted to meddle. Yeah. And, and finally, I just like, I realized like, I can't just be fake nice to this person, even though they're like connected to my husband. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't matter who they are. If it was my family member, I would have blocked them already, but I was trying to be nice because this person knows, you know, my husband. And I was like, I can't. And I just like blocked a whole lot of people on his side. Um, and, and they better never contact me again. (laughs) Like I'll just get the police on all of them. Cause that whole lot is very ill and needs therapy and, and, and only wants to draw people into their drama. And in my twenties, I probably could have gotten sucked in a lot longer right? Trying to make sense of it, trying to like find the logic in it, seeing my part in what I did. And like, Mm. this is like, this is like one of the times where I'm like, no, I did nothing. You can, you can read all of my messages. And I constantly said about, I mean, the only thing I did was be nice, right? I'm not going to like take responsibility for being nice, right? Like I gave this person a chance. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I literally did nothing in this situation. You don't have to be accountable for your niceness. Right, right. <laughs> I don't have to learn a lesson from being nice. I just, the lesson is when you see a red flag, me, just nip it in the bud right away. Like yeah. I knew that that woman, I knew the second person had drama. I just thought if I kept setting enough boundaries, they wouldn't get sure. me in. Mm. Right. So that's my difficult person story, which hopefully made sense by saying person one, person two, and person three. Um, but literally, like dealing with them was the first time I've had a panic attack. And like, I mean, I don't even know, 15 years, like a ridiculously long time. Like, you know, we talk about panic attacks and I remember what they're like, but I haven't had yeah. one in so long. And then after person number two contacted person number one, like saying that I wanted to be involved. I mean, it was like, I still don't understand it. There's no logic. There's no rational reason for those behaviors at all, except for that they're all really ill. And and that's why there's no logic, right? Like that's the only way I can explain it. And so- or people that, like you said, if this person was raised in a chaotic environment, it's like the the beast, you know, it's like the familiarity of yeah. the, the, the struggle and discomfort yeah. of, mm-hmm. of it all, of the drama, of wrapping yourself up in it, of, of working your way through it, of trying to make it worse, right? It's like, if that's, that's, and this person I know goes, we've been, we talked about this for so long. It's, it's, it's been a while, like you said mm-hmm. already, but when it was happening, we had lots of conversations about it and I remember them well, but like these people are much, much older. They're a yes. different generation than mm-hmm. we are. And so, yeah, I feel like it does uniquely go to the fact that pe- nobody, maybe, maybe not nobody, but very few people in that generation mm-hmm. and maybe slightly younger and older, c- certainly um, don't seek help. Right. No. It wasn't it wasn't part of who they were and their makeup growing up or right. And in their in the most of their adulthoods. Right. Yes. And so yes. it's like yes. Changing one of now them, is challenging, I'm sure, for them. Right. Probably. One of them is definitely anti therapy. Uh, another one has gone to therapy. I think they've been in therapy for like twenty years, thirty years, forty years. Interesting. But but because I feel very certain. I'm not just like being flippant in using the word personality disorder. I take it seriously. I'm not a therapist, so I can't really diagnose people, right? 
but I have read enough books because I've tried to understand it. And because I do have like my family members, I have family members with different mental illness and personality disorders. And I've tried to understand it so that we can have a relationship. Right. So, so I do approach it in an empathetic way, but this other person has gone to therapy. And my assumption is their stories are warped when they talk to the therapist. Right. And so, yeah. So my assumption is the therapist can't offer that much help. Like, like the therapist has said, stop trying to fix stuff because person number two told us that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to stop fixing stuff. But probably since their, you know, um, since their childhood was so chaotic and they couldn't fix it as childhood, it's like their go-to is to try to fix it up now as grownups. And they still can't because they're trying to fix things that can't be fixed. They just have to be. Yeah. Um, but- but my lesson is like, for real, like <clears throat> I can have empathy, right. And, and I can have compassion that, that people, difficult people had rough upbringings to cause them to behave the way they do. Yeah. But I am at a zero tolerance. Like mm -hmm. you yep. do one thing and like, I mean, I'm done. I'm blocking you. I'm unfriending you. I'm I'm I am blocking you on every social media platform. I am blocking you in my phone and you know, blocking you in my email. I'm never going to get an email from you. We're done. And and that right. gives me a lot more peace, right? Like I feel so much more peace knowing that these people can't contact me because they are ill and I Did don't you... want their illness. I to, to be sucked into their chaos illness. Right. Did that revelation of, you know, blocking and literally cutting off come mm -hmm. after your panic attack, your first one in 15 years or more? No, the revelation and blocking happened in 2021, where I had a family member who was being super nasty to me, like throughout the year and blaming me for things that had nothing to do with me. Right. Like, like weird, weird stuff and um they were just like really passive aggressive and snarky with me right around when dan and i got married mm -hmm. um and i didn't have the patience to deal with them right? right and so i just decided rather than responding to their snark by trying to explain it or trying to empathize you know it like had nothing to do with me and dan getting married had nothing to do with them and they took something personally about that um, and, and I was like, I don't have the bandwidth for this person, even though they're my family member and I just blocked them and I unfriended them. And that was like the first time. And so the moment that this chaos started happening, um, with Dan's side, I was like, I don't even have to think about it. Like, no, nope. right. no. Nope. So I've yeah. learned from the past. Um, yeah. I've blocked a few other people too, you know, that were difficult or challenging. Um, but you know, I'm at the time in my life where like, I mean, I'm not like cutting people off left and right, but I also just yeah. don't have the bandwidth to deal with drama. Like I, if you have not worked on your trauma and you're not actively working on your issues and you're just like taking them out on everyone else, like I'm not here for it. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. Like, right. It's not your responsibility to, no. to care for them and their mental no. health. No. And then get yeah. sucked into their drama of chaos because they're not dealing with their issues. It's yeah. not, it's not my problem. It's not my problem. So mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. things just are, are beyond our control. Yeah. And our scope to be yep. able to deal with, to be able to support. I mean, yeah. And it's, it's an individual decision. It sounds like, right. Like, mm -hmm. and it's like when you brought up your, the former, you know, your family member that you went through something with the years prior mm -hmm. and how that informed your decision and mm -hmm. how fast you came to that decision mm -hmm. when it came to these people in this web of, of drama. Chaos. Yeah. Funny. Then it's just like, it's always a shame when we have to have traumatic experiences to inform mm -hmm. what happens next, but that's typically the way that, that goes. Right. Yeah. You learn, you learn from, if you if you can, you do the best you can to learn from your own right. past experiences and the, and the experiences of people around you. And you know, with these three examples, like the person from a few years ago, and then the people on Dan's side, like in all of these examples, none of them are working in reality. 
like they are all making up stuff. Like they are just making up stories in their mind and then, you know, putting it on me or, or whoever, like it's not reality. Right. Like I literally have proof of all of the things that they're claiming happened that didn't happen, you know, like, and I just, if, if we don't have a shared reality, yeah, <laughs> there's no room for anything else in that. Right. There's like, yeah, like literally like just making up like stuff that never happened or, or, or neglecting the things that actually did happen. Mm. Right. Like when yeah. I have proof of it with snapshots right. of emails, right. When I have proof of it, of like a video or whatever, like, and I'm showing them right. the proof and they're ignoring it. Like I no, like this right. can't happen. Well, we live so. in the age of alternative facts. So but, but that's the thing is like, this is different, right? Because I thought of that when I was like, when we're in different realities, like, right. like, like me and rational people can be in different realities and we can find common ground, right? But these very specific people, like when I show them, hey, this video where you literally said this thing you're claiming didn't happen, right? And they're like, no, it didn't happen. And they're still causing drama over it. It's like, there's no, there's no repair here. Yeah. No, if they, if they can't look at a video objectively and say that thing is happening. Yeah. Right. Of course. It, yeah. You're literally on two different planets. It's yeah. Not, it yeah. isn't worth, it's not worth your energy, your peace. Nope. To see a way forward. Totally. Yeah. That's so hard. Yeah. What would you say now? Like you said, you're not a therapist, you're not a doctor, you, you know, you're just a person who's coping, who's, who has coped with the situation. Mm-hmm. And over the years, um, you've learned what it means to create boundaries for yourself, mm-hmm. to, you know, do those things that you need to do to protect yourself, your mental health, your sanity, your peace. What would you say to someone that's just beginning to understand boundaries? Like what mm. kind of advice would you offer a person, whether they be our age, older, younger, right? That's, it can be kind of irrelevant, but let's, let's for, just for argument's sake, let's say that they're somebody, they're, they're like a version of you from your past, a younger mm-hmm. Abby. What would you hope for them to be able to be where you are, where you are now, maybe sooner or faster? Like the first thought coming up and it's just so cliche, but it's like, it's okay if people don't like you when you set these boundaries, like yes. that's okay. Right. And, and it's so simple, but it's really hard in practice, mm-hmm. right? Like even recently, this is completely off topic, but it's related. Recently, some random woman who I've never met in my life uh, knew that I was teaching at, at one of the schools I'm teaching at and reached out to me and was like, hey, I'd love to, um, you know, uh, watch you teach these classes and maybe sub for you and this and that. And I like responded and I was like, Hey, this sounds like a conversation we should have over the phone. Let's talk about your goals. Let me like, right. Yeah. And in the conversation, I said, you know, mentorship is you pay for it. Like if you want to become a kid's yoga and mindfulness teacher, this is something you pay for. And, you know, these would be the expectations if we work together. And she was like, I can tell that you're from New York because I'm from the Midwest and people are so nice in the Midwest, but sometimes when it comes to business, like you just have to set the boundaries. And she like was kind of insulting me and kind of giving me a compliment at the same time. (laughs) Yeah. Literally was like people from the Midwest are nice. And I was like, bitch, I just spent 45 fucking minutes on the phone with you knowing that you're not going to pay me. Right. Right. Like I'm giving you 45 minutes of my time to a stranger. Like I know I like, she doesn't value entitled. Yeah, completely. Like, I just wanted to like sit and watch you and then sub for you. Yeah. What? I was like, uh, I need to know you. I need to know how you teach. Like, you know, anyway. So and, infuriating. And, and, <laughs> and, but it just struck me as like, when you set boundaries, especially with people you know long term, like they're going to receive that differently when they're so used to interacting with you one specific way. Yes. Right. And then you start setting boundaries. It's like, well, what's your problem? You know, Mm -hmm. like setting boundaries can cause conflict, but, but it's worth doing it at a younger age. So you're way more practiced and stronger at it at an older age. Right. Right. Um, 
but I never heard from that woman again. And I set that boundary and I don't, I don't care. Yeah. Right. But right. I probably would have overthought and cared a lot more in my twenties and thirties. Mm-hmm. Oh, did yeah. I say? Cause you would have been thing? thinking something. Oh, should yeah. I said, I heard her feelings. Yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe I should have just given her a chance and let her sit and get free mentorship from right. Like, yeah, I could have. So I guess that's like the, just the first advice is like, you can't control how people react to your boundaries, but yeah. you're doing it as like self-preservation or self-care. And that's right. more important than their reaction to it. And if they're worth it, they'll have conversations with you. Yes. Setting the boundary is easy. It's holding the boundary. Mm-hmm. That's hard. And navigating right? the responses and reactions to the boundary. Right. Even if you just say the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Right. That's been helpful for me is it, when someone art tries to argue with a boundary or re- reason with me, quote unquote, right. Or rationalize my head away from that boundary. Mm-hmm. It's a good practice for me. And maybe, maybe for some of you warriors to just repeat the boundary mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just in the simplest, plainest language, right. Language that you have. Yeah. Because it just, it's, it's, and that is, I think the hardest part yeah. is holding the boundary. The ho- holding is, and maintaining it is way harder than just saying, Hey, yeah. I, this is what's, this is what I need going forward. Maybe that's hard too, but it's not as hard as keeping it. But knowing it's non-negotiable, it. not exactly. negotiating on your boundary after you set it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, I think that's, I mean, that's good advice. I mean, that's good advice for sure. What, uh, what about you? Do you want to start with some advice or do you want to start with some difficult people conversation chat? Hmm. Um, I mean, well, I don't, I'll just share, you know, what I've been dealing with because I, I feel like I'm hoping that the wisdom, <laughs> if we want to call it that, comes, comes later, you know, because, mm. you know, I, I mean, it's, I'm through the situation yeah. that I'm about to share, but, um, I feel like I'm still negotiating with myself on if it just played out that way because it played out that way mm. or if how how I would feel differently if it ended differently mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying like I I'm not mm-hmm. sure that it, I mean I'm hopeful that it's ju- that it would have been the same outcome regardless of how I handled the conversation mm-hmm. but I don't know and so it's like I could offer the advice, right, on navigating a difficult conversation, navigating a challenging person or um, or what I thought would be really challenging, right? And a lot of what I'm going to say is about how I built something up in my head before I had the conversation mm. that made a relatively easy conversation more challenging because I had spent too much time overthinking it mm. ahead of time. So, so it was it was a challenging conversation, but you hyped it up more in your mind that it yeah. became like a stressful, challenging conversation. But then when the actual conversation happened, it wasn't as stressful as you anticipated. And then yes. you realize you built up a lot in your mind pre-conversation. Yeah. So there's okay. the advice right there, right? It's <laughs> It's if you haven't had a difficult conversation yet, don't assume it's going to be a difficult yes. conversation. Okay, that's great. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. Right? I yeah. mean, that's it. It's but and look, and I but I also want to acknowledge that it's easy to for your mind to get there, right? right. You hear things, people have a reputation. Mm-hmm. You know, you you wind up and and that's it's it's my fault to some extent of like, you know, you overhear or somebody comes to you and says Ooh, I had this rough conversation with that person mm-hmm. and good luck, right? When they hear what I, what I'm about to share, it's like, Oh God. Okay. I'm, I'll be thinking of you. Right. And so like, yeah. when you hear those kinds of things, it is hard to navigate my own emotions after that. Cause it's like, okay, well that that's also outside world lending itself to my own narrative. Yeah. And if my narrative was already like, this is a big, scary conversation that I don't that I wish I didn't have to have, but I do because yeah. I'm a grown yeah. up and we have to have hard conversations sometimes. Um, but now I'm also allowing other people's experiences penetrate my narrative. Yeah. And yeah. And you are in recovery as a people pleaser. 
Exactly. And perfectionist. You are in recovery for these things. <laughs> and yep, so working it's on really it. hard, right? We haven't mastered that bit yet. Like both no. of us are, you know, are recovering people pleasers, but neither one of us have mastered it. And so even if we notice those sensations of wanting to be liked and working with that, it's still present, mm-hmm. right? Like I'm, I'm putting myself in your situation, like having a difficult conversation for, for par- me, part of it also is like, how do we have this like difficult conversation, but like, we still like each other at the end, right? Like, how yeah. can I make it that way? Everyone's happy, right? Even Exactly. Though- yeah. Like you said, right. It's like having the, it's like having a boundary. Mm-hmm. It, it's like, I, I don't want to lose something and I, and I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. I was waiting to lose something after the conversation, right? Mm-hmm. I was, I'm going to say some hard things that might be hard for this person to hear. Yeah. And I'm worried that once I say those hard things, that person's going to feel a lot of feelings. Yeah. What I failed to think about, or I didn't fail to think about it. I did think about it, but it didn't really change my feeling about it. My perception was that that person's a whole human being who's allowed to and should feel whatever they want about what I'm sharing. Right. Mm. They are a whole person that deserves all the space to feel what they feel. Now there's the separate conversation about like how they react and Right. right. That, that goes to their own healing work and whatever. But where my brain went was just like, it logically I'm like, they can have all the feelings. I just don't want to be the recipient of those feelings. Right. If those feelings are being thrown at me, whether they be verbally or, and even mm-hmm. if the person didn't yell or get angry where it was visible and obvious or hurt where it was visible and obvious or sad or where it was visible and obvious, just the idea that they might be feeling those things yeah, made me really uncomfortable because, because I don't want to make people uncomfortable. Right. Right. <laughs> at, the end, at the end of the day, it's like, and I, I, I feel like I, I have enough self-awareness to know that something I just said landed wrong or made someone uncomfortable or whatever, typically, right. Not always. And I, I usually, if somebody brings that to me, mm-hmm. I really welcome it because I don't know if it's just because that's just my personality or I've had many years to practice listening without being reactive and then responding in a way that hopefully feels like at least calm, whether it be helpful, mm-hmm. I can't say, but at least calm and somewhat regulated and measured. Um, and it's taken me a long time to become that person, but I feel like generally I'm okay with like hearing hard information and then navigating the discomfort and and working working my way through it, right? Whether it be with that person or on my own and then with that person or some combination of both. Mm-hmm. But when I'm delivering something challenging and I and I have some experience with their reactivity, but I'm also getting feedback from other people about their experiences with that person's reactivity. I'm more worried than I need of to be. Of course. Right. Of it's course. just like, the input is out of control. I'm yeah. then I'm fending off my own ridiculous anxieties. And then the other people around me are feeding off of their anxiety yeah. for me. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, so this has become a, a story without a story. You know, the just is <laughs> basically just, I mean, but I'm sure it's, I, I'm hoping it's somewhat relatable. People yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. It makes sense. You know, the gist is that I had to share some news with people I work for that I'm going to be no longer working for. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm not like, it wasn't like, oh, I'm, I quit or I'm, you know, F you, I'm leaving all together. It was, there was no negativity on my end when it came to that, but it was the fawn response. It was the people pleaser yeah. in me. It was yeah. the, I want to have a continuous loving professional pr- relationship with these people. I want to be uplifting their work. I hope that they mm-hmm. want to uplift my work, you know? And um and so it was just a matter of like doing it in a way that felt the safest for me in my anxiety journey. Yeah. And so how I navigated that was writing everything down first, right? I needed to write down how I felt, you know, explore all of the, the fear and whatever that I was noticing in my body and in my thoughts. And I had to prep for this. And now mm-hmm. I had the luxury of being able to have time to prep for this. Not everyone has time to prep for hard conversations, right? right? right. Difficult people or whatever. And so I, I acknowledge that it was a privilege to have the time to work that out. So I worked that out on my own first. Then I write down, you know, I started drafting um, 
written email because that is what feels the safest for my anxiety. How do I have a difficult conversation? I know that I know myself well enough, right? I practice knowing myself that if I were to have this conversation face to face as like, you know, God, yeah, I just, I literally would forget everything. I would be already making consent, you know, concessions. I'd be, you know, backtracking on my boundaries and my needs and what I'm doing with my life. All of the things that I would have in my mind going into that conversation would be different. And so, you know, uh, writing the email felt good. It felt right. It felt safe. Right. And right. so that's what I did. And right? it set and the I... clear expectations and the boundaries in there exactly. in writing so that exactly. you can, even after a conversation, like reference the email, right? Like, yeah. it's like, well, in my email, I said this, right? Like, so it's then, the proof, like yeah. you said, right? Yeah. It's like, I've got the back, I've got the, the, the receipts here mm-hmm. about how this conversation went, right? At least in its initial form. Right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and so I, I shared it with you. I shared it with mm-hmm. Adam, you know, very few trusted people that knew about the situation and, and that I knew would give me objective and, and kind feedback yeah. on, on what I wrote. And so with that, you know, I, I, I kept it to mostly what it was. I made, I did make a few changes. Um, and then I just said, it's time. Yeah. Listen, I was, I, again, it was a privilege. I was able to say it's time. And so I, sent it. And then, you know, very shortly afterward, I received a response. It was nothing but warm and loving and hopeful and supportive and joyous. And then subsequently I've had conversations with, with these people and it's been great. Yeah. You know, a little, it's like the, the moment where you see each other after, after the exchange is mostly done, yeah. Yeah. It's done via email. Um, is very different. It's mm-hmm. almost, it's almost a little bit more uncomfortable because it's like, mm-hmm. do we acknowledge the elephant in the room? Do we mm-hmm. ignore it? And there was a little bit of both, you know? And, um, but overall, I just, I feel like I knew it was the right call regardless. Right. And so like, when we come to hard truths in our mind, in our body, some combination of both, and we have to share those hard truths, those, you know, those, um, growth spurts, those changes, whatever it is with another person, And you're worried about it being challenging, regardless of your relationship with them. It's just completely, I get, I just, I want to say that it just is completely normal. Mm -hmm. It's completely Mm -hmm. normal to have fear and anxiety, even if you're not an anxiety warrior around coping with the potential of challenge too. Yeah. Because in my case, right, it wasn't like, oh, a challenge has been forced upon me like it was for you. It, and and then you have to navigate like this is being tossed to me. What do I need to do? What what is my best course of action next? For me, it was having too much time maybe to overthink something that hadn't happened yet mm-hmm. and and form beliefs in my mind about something that hadn't happened to me yet. Yeah. I mean, and yes, as a jaded person who's had plenty of discomforting conversations yes. in my life, yeah, I had that trauma, right? To that right. informed how I felt about this conversation. But it isn't, it wasn't necessarily fair of me to make assumptions about how they'd feel about what I had to say. Um, And so, yeah, I think that, that, that's the, that's the long, that's the long, you know, the long end of it, but I feel good. Yeah. It was an important conversation needed to happen and now it happened. And so it's like the other pieces of advice, I guess, is thinking about your future self. Is this, is having this difficult conversation is, you know, being around this difficult person or a challenging situation or challenging person. Um, is it propelling you towards your higher purpose, your, your truth, right? Right. What you want for yourself, whether it be a simple, whether it be a new job or as simple as like, Hey, I need to be able to sleep tonight and not have a panic attack. Right. (laughs) Right. Right. Um, and yeah. So, yeah, I think that's it. And and I want to add on to that last bit of like advice, because while you were talking, I had a couple of thoughts. The first thought was like, I was super amused because I can relate to like over like building something up in the head and like having like all of your like warrior fighting tools, right? Like you're like, oh, yes. well, if they say this, I'm ready to say this. And if they say this, I'm ready. Right. And like amping yourself up for like maybe walking into the space and like feeling uncomfortable, right? Like all of these levels of like, so I can so relate yeah. to that. And then it just being like, no big deal. And you're like, right. What? Yeah. 
Like you're like, well, that was a waste of time. No, like where where did, we, where did I go wrong in this? Like, so I I had that amusement. Yeah. Definitely had that too, where it's like shockingly surprising how easy it went, right? Yeah. Um, but when I was hearing your conversation, another piece of advice stuck out with for me that you didn't like it didn't happen, but I thought about it how and it could apply in your situation and mine. Mm-hmm. And that advice is like me and you or the universal you or whatever doesn't need to have the last word. Right. So mm. even if they had responded in a way that caused you discomfort, yeah, you still had said what you said and you don't need to have the last word in trying to make it better. Yes. Right. No, it's or so true. In trying to explain it mm-hmm. or in trying to have them understand your perspective. Yeah. Right. Or having yes. them understand what, right. And so, and it worked for me too. And like, like when you were saying that, and I was thinking about like emailing back and forth, like even with like the person that I blocked a few years ago, that was a family member, believe me, I had a ton of things I wanted to reply to them. Yeah. But they wouldn't have received it. And I, yeah. I and so instead they got the last word, but it was the last word and they got blocked. Right. And so I sure. feel like that is also like just really helpful advice. Like, like, we don't have to have the last word. Yeah. It's not about winning. No. no an argument, right? Yeah. Liked or having them understand because they might be choosing not to understand in that moment, right? Whether they're aware of choosing it or not. But, and yeah. so I just felt like that was a nice, like. No, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. We don't need to have the last word. Exactly. And that's, I mean, and that, that might feel, that might be a new level of, challenge, right? Mm-hmm. To you, to you warriors, if you're thinking about a conversation you need to have with people or a person, or if you're remembering a conversation that you've had or an interaction or just, just having that said person or people in your life, right? It doesn't even have to just be, I mean, we're talking a little bit about communication, right? Um, and navigating difficult people, but also difficult communication mm-hmm. because in my sense, it wasn't, it wasn't difficult people. It was no. a challenge. It was more of a challenge yeah. and it was a challenging, um, a challenging conversation that I knew needed to happen. Right. And so it's yeah. different from, from your, pers- um, from your situation a little bit, but I love that. I feel like, and I, and I, I'm definitely guilty of that still like mm-hmm. where I'm like, Oh, I need to get this person to my way of thinking because the way, yeah. you know, the way they think is toxic or, or is harmful to them in the long run mm-hmm. and then probably being harmful to other people in their life. But like you mentioned, it isn't our job to navigate other people's mental health, no. their, you know, their needs all the time. Mm-hmm. So, and that's tricky. So we can acknowledge that too, but it's right. hard. Especially know. when we know they're wrong, right? Like, Yep. Like when we know it, when we literally have, like you said, the receipts, we have proof mm-hmm. like, no, you're wrong, but we don't have to have the last word. Let them, let them sit right. in their righteousness or whatever it is, you yeah. know, like, like I, I remember I had a boss once that would ask so much of me and I have it in writing in emails. And when I said, Hey, you can't ask me to do these things and not pay me. They're like, I never asked you to do that. And I'm like, what you did? Again, yeah. I didn't even like put it in my mind at that point. Like you, you don't need to have the last word, but at some point I was just like, I have to stop overthinking, writing them back with proof and just let right. it go. Yeah. Because they don't care about the proof. No, no. Right? It's like, and what so are they like going to even... do with the proof? Like, yeah, exactly. It's yeah. right. It's a probably to some extent, depending on it, like if you're dealing with narcissism or whatever, mm-hmm. it's only going to make them angrier and fight harder. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. It's like, they don't, they don't want you throwing with their own words in their face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so at that point, it's like that works in like a legal situation, but yeah. may not, it may not really contribute to navigating that difficult conversation. Um, interesting. It's so interesting. Okay. Warriors. So navigating difficult people, challenging people, or just difficult conversations, mm-hmm. right? Just having to, um, be, have, having to have a back and forth, having to communicate with people that are either, challenging themselves or that the topic or the subject matter is difficult for you or challenging for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe spend some time today or this week chewing on that a little bit. How is um, people pleasing or just a fond response shown up for you in your journey? How is boundary setting 
um, and holding those boundaries helped you, supported you? Have you not meddled in that yet? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Dipped your toe in that pool yet? We recommend that you do. Um, And uh, how have you navigated some of these situations? Hopefully something that we said felt like at least something for you to go, huh, you know, and just reflect on um, people or conversations you've had in your life, whether they be recent or from your past. Um, And if you had to do it again today, maybe what would be, what would be different? What does today's you feel like versus the old you? That's a good question for me and you, maybe I'm going to think about that too. I know for either, for both of us, it's pretty recent still for, for everything, but mm-hmm. it's like, it's like, huh, if, that, if I were to do that again today, what, what would I have done differently? Right. Yeah. Without spending too much time again, like, oh, I should, should have, would have, could on yourself. It's just like, I think it could just be a powerful reflection so we can keep growing and trying mm-hmm. to do better by ourselves and each other. All right, warriors, Abby's going to share her win of the week. Winner, winner of the, the week. week. <laughs> I was trying to harmonize with you there. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> we can't do that. That's for professional singers. Harmonize. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> I can't do that. I love that. I love that. Come on now. Um, well, like you said, the last conversation we had, like it's been a while since we've recorded, and I have so many wins. So I'm going to do five highlights, five highlights okay. of the last couple months. Ooh, like lightning winds, mm, lightning winds, lightning winds. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. <laughs> All right. Lightning, lightning winds. winds. <laughs> lightning wind number one. Uh, Dan and I went on our first vacation since like pre-pandemic and we okay. went to San Diego and we went to the San Diego Zoo and that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Lightning win number two. We also did our trip to New York and woo, woo. we saw you. Woo. Woo, woo. We had a delicious lunch. We mm-hmm. went to the beach. We had dinner yeah. and we wanted more. So, yes, that's too short. Two. Number three, hung out with my mom in New York. Yay, Fran. Good times. Uh, number four, uh, it was my birthday. And we went to the zoo because the zoo is my beach because Colorado doesn't have a beach, right? Don't call lakes beaches to me ever. No, no, no. Those are not beaches. So the zoo is my beach. And then we went to a bookstore because bookstores are also my beach, right? Oh, yeah. Um, So that's win number four. Mm -hmm. Uh, Number five. Um, I've been really excited about teaching kids yoga and mindfulness this upcoming school year because I'm going to include like wildlife facts and conservation facts, right? I'm like changing the way I teach. I'm mm-hmm. doing stuff around animals. And I had done a uh, story about beanie babies and how I found some some like new beanie babies um, on eBay. And when the guy knew that I was using them for a class, he threw in some extra. Mm. And then someone I know through the kids yoga world, um, uh, saw and then said, Hey, I have some too. And she shipped them to me. And now I have Aww. loads of beanie babies to do loads of fun things with. So super excited that is about awesome. that. Awesome. I'm yeah. going to have to go on the hunt for beanie babies. That is awesome. Yeah. I really feel like a, those are all fabulous wins. Yes. But B, I think you should be teaching kids yoga and mindfulness at the zoo. Yeah, I know. I, I got to figure out how to navigate that. I got to figure out how to start yeah. that up. You need to, you need to pioneer that shit. Yeah. I've been thinking about it. That needs to happen. That needs to happen. Yeah. I I want that for you. Yeah. They actually did do some adult yoga this summer, but it was like at seven in the morning and the zoo is. Yeah. It's like before the zoo opens. Like I can't. Yeah. That's early. I can't. No, you're going to have to, you're going to figure it out. I think. I love the zoo and I love yoga, but I love sleep more than both those things. (laughs) Yeah, I think we can. It's fair to say that sleep is maybe your number one love. Yeah, like yeah. your first, your first true love. Yeah, I love um, sleep. Okay. At least not waking up early. So, yeah. yeah. But see, I think planted. you're gonna figure it out though, even if it's just a one-off, like an event. Yeah. I think that needs to happen. Okay. You hear me, Denver Zoo people? Give Abby that job. Make yeah. That happen. Those are fabulous wins. I love nice. the quick lightning, lightning win highlight reel there. There we go. Awesome. Lightning awesome sauce. Wins. 
lightning wins. <laughs> All right, warriors, we love you so much. Thanks for hanging out with us again this week. If you would like to connect with us for any reason, join our Instagram fam. We have some mm-hmm. fun over there. We're at Anxiety Warriors Podcast, or you can shoot us an email and or not or um, at Anxiety Warriors Podcast at gmail.com. Let us know your wins of the week, big or small. We love them all equally. You can share topic ideas with us. Let us know if you think you would be an amazing guest on our show. You have an Anxiety Warrior story to share. We'd love to have you on. Let's get it on the calendar. Take a second and smash that five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're tuning in right now. Wherever you're listening to this podcast, hit five stars. Just do it. Leave us a review. Just do it. Helps more warriors find out about our show and join our fam. That said, we'd also love it if you took a moment and shared this episode or any episode that you loved with at least one fellow warrior in your life or anyone mm-hmm. that you just think would benefit from hanging out with us every Friday. Uh, also, we've got some kick-ass merch as always in our Threadless shop. You can link, uh, you can find a link to that in our show notes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, thank you all so much for going on this journey with us. We are so grateful we get to do this with you all. Till next time. <laughs>